Okay, hello everybody. My name is Kevin Ross and today with Carl Edwards, we will be presenting our submissions to Touche 2021, uh, task one, argument retrieval for controversial questions. The outline of this presentation will first talk about um, our submissions to this task, um, including three baseline methods and two methods based off of manifold approximation. And then we'll talk about the retrieval results. So the scores we got um, for the submission runs. And then we'll talk a bit about uh, some sort of argument retrieval visualization methods that we uh, worked on both using BM25 and the manifold based approximation. And then we'll talk about some future work for what we think would be interesting to build off of um, from our contributions. So first talking about our baselines, our uh, one of our first baselines was BM25, which was just a standard implementation using the PySerini toolkit with the default settings. We fine tuned the parameters K1 and B on last year's topics and relevant scores. Our next baseline method was just a simple BERT-based similarity encoder between um, a topic and an argument. And because some arguments were longer than the length, we split each argument into similar length like, passages of about 200 words. And then for a given topic, we returned the most 1,000 similar passages and then ranked those based off of, rank the arguments based off of the maximum score of its passages. And then finally, for our third baseline run, we did an interpolated method um, of the semantic in BM25. And again, we fine tuned that on the scores from the previous uh, or last year's topics and relevant scores. And so those are our three baseline runs. And now we'll talk about the manifold approximation. And so this is a, like a pseudo feedback approach um, using the idea of manifold approximation. And for those of you who don't know, a manifold is just a topological space that is locally resembling a Euclidean space. Uh, our manifold calculation was based off of UMAP, so uniform manifold approximation and projection, but just the first half of that equation. And UMAP is just a dimensionality reduction approach. And so the key idea for us is we assume that um, from the top and initially retrieved arguments from one of our baseline methods, uh, we assume that they were relevant and then perform some sort of approximation on the nearest neighbors of those top N arguments. And then we aggregate the scores uh, across all those arguments of the neighbors and then we get some sort of ranking that tells us um, an approximation of how strong or complete and that's what we believe from this approach is that higher aggregated scores indicate stronger or more relevant arguments over irrelevant arguments and then so this is some sort of the math behind uh, this approximation where the first row you see here uh, for a given argument in the top um, n retrieved arguments from the initial run as xi this row is just the minimum distance to its closest neighbor, like the distance to its closest neighbor. Uh, and then using this, we calculate um, we calculate the sigma uh, and fixing the sum. So this log 2k, k is just the number of nearest neighbors. We fix that. And then we look at the sigma, try to calculate that over all of the nearest neighbors of the returned argument. And then the weight between a returned argument and its nearest neighbors is just this, uh, its contribution to the overall sum. And then so the idea is that uh, closer or more similar arguments to an initially assumed relevant argument would have a higher sum. And our paper goes more into detail about why we did it this way and then what neat properties this has over just using the similarity. So feel free to look into that for a deeper explanation. Yes, so to use this manifold approximation, what we do is initially, um, we, so we created an initial ranking using uh, the interpolation between BM25 and semantic search. Uh, following this, so we assume that the top three arguments are relevant and we find the 50 nearest neighbors for each of those. Um, we compute the manifold weights as described and then we sum them across all the top arguments. So once we've done that, um, then we re-rank all the arguments uh, according to their score for one of our approaches. And for the other one, we only re-rank the top 10 from the initial run. And so this is how we apply that. Yeah, so here are the results. Um, so you can see that for relevance, um, that the semantic helped with this the most. Um, and manifold did not decrease that. Um, but for quality, we found that the manifold uh, approach provided a sum of an, somewhat of an increase 
And in fact, um, it provided an increase over the 0.815 rather than the 0.822. Um, so it recovered from the performance degradation from interpolating with the semantic method uh, for quality. Um. Yeah, and so those were our argument retrieval results. And next we'll talk a bit about uh, our visualization approaches. So this wasn't part of the task, but we felt it was interesting to explore this uh, research direction because we felt that during a debate, ranked lists of arguments, you know, may not be the most optimal way to display something, you know, especially during like a debate when you're participating it or watching, you might not have the time to scroll through a list to find uh, the most relevant or the most applicable arguments. And so we thought to use the args.me corpus, the corpus for this task, to explore various visualization techniques to help summarize and retrieve debates in real time. We propose two techniques here, one based off of BM25 and the other based off of our manifold based approximation. Um, and so we demonstrate these visualizations using a third party transcript. So a transcript of a debate that's not part of the args.me corpus. Um, and then we show it in relation to the corpus as like, a, so we use a corpus as sort of a foundation and then retrieve arguments from that corpus using the transcript of the, the YouTube debate. Yeah, so this debate is publicly available on YouTube. Um, it's Bill Nye debates Ken Ham about evolution and creationism, a four minute window. We chose this for demonstrative purposes. Uh, we chose it because not only does it cover topics that are in the args dummy corpus, but the transcript was pretty accurate for those four minutes. And it covered a diverse enough set of topics so that we could uh, show both the benefits and drawbacks of our approaches. So the first visualization technique, like I mentioned, is based off of BM25. And to do that, we leverage the um, each transcript window. So I'm sure everybody's familiar with the YouTube transcript windows or the closed caption windows. Uh, where they pop up in like a few seconds and they're about zero to eight words per window, depending on how many words are being spoken at the time. Uh, so as this debate progresses, right, over the four minutes, we define a look back size, we chose five. Um, and then for each look back size number of windows, so the five previous windows at a given point, we use the text in these windows as a query and search over the args.me corpus uh, using BM25. And then we record the rankings of the top k equals 20, again, chosen for demonstrative purposes, uh, returned arguments. And then as the debate goes on, we plot the ranking changes of the most frequent arguments as the debate progresses. And so this is what it looks like uh, for that window. What, right here, you see the uh, top five most frequent arguments um, up here, and then some like uh, our topic summarizations of, of these arguments, and then here is how the rankings change. So here is zero. So the higher, the more relevant. Um, and here are the timestamps on the x-axis and it's color coded per these argument IDs. Um, we didn't, we can fit the whole transcript of YouTube between this window uh, and here. So feel free to check out the paper and see um, how, as, as, the, uh, as the YouTube topics change, how different argument IDs become relevant uh, over time. So in addition to this, we also investigating using the um, manifold approximation um, work for visualization as well. So we used uh, UMAP for that and we created what we call caterpillar embeddings of the debate transcript. And so these are kind of like a sliding window, but instead of behaving like a normal sliding window, they contract and then expand um, much like a caterpillar inching along. And the reason, and so the reason for this is because we didn't want to both remove and add information at the same time um, because it might, it might lead to too much movement. And so that way, this way, when something moves in say the, um, uh, visualization, we know if it's because something was taken away or if it's because something was added. Um, and we, so to do this, we encoded the sentences. Um, so yeah, we, uh, first we retrieved uh, relevant arguments to uh, the debate transcript and we split them into sentences. Then we encoded both these sentences and the caterpillar embeddings um, using a BERT-based sentence encoder. And finally, we projected this using UMAP. Um, 
And so the goal of this is to be able to see how the debate compares to um, say other things like for example, um, if you're watching a debate, then maybe you want to see what other debates have said about something or relevant information to the current topic of the debate. So as, as an example here, we have a visualization and the argument begins in the middle where the red dot is. Um, so a little bit later, um, the argument has moved mostly towards the bottom left and uh, we found that this kind of quadrant here to signify things like the creation of the universe and heavens and things related to God. Then here it went over to the right for a little bit, and this was focusing more on God's like powers and knowledge and things like that. And then finally it moved upward, and this is when they started talking more about things like physics and life science and astronomy. And this is the final frame we have here in our example. And so this shows how as the debate changes topics, it kind of moves around this uh, semantic space we've created using arguments in the args me corpus and a retrieval method. Right, so those were our uh, approaches for retrieval and visualization and some future work uh, we'd like to explore. The first being the effects of this manifold based re-ranking or this manifold based scoring on the arguments themselves. So we first like to let more arguments contribute to the manifold weights, like very maybe instead of assuming the top three are relevant, like top five, or top 10, or see what happens if we run it over the whole corpus or something like that, uh, what kind of weights we get from there. Um, also incorporate with positive and negative examples and look at some sort of statistical significance between the runs, which is something that we uh, weren't able to do in the uh, initial submission, but definitely to see um, how, how the manifold based rankings are changing the initial runs. And then also exploring this over different corpora, like the track or uh, MS Marco or some other um, more robust uh, corpora. And then also we like to expand on these visualization techniques that we've described, like for example, allowing users to define topics or pre-specified paths that they'd like to see um, happen in debates or, um, and also look at one issue that we encountered is that the YouTube transcript um, is a spoken debate, but a lot of debates in the args.me corpus are written debates. So there's a bit of a semantic mismatch when trying to encode these things in an, uh, like a BERT-based similarity encoder. So we wanna look at how to better match a spoken debate domain with the written debate domain and vice versa. And so that concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you very much for, present, uh, for uh, attending the presentation. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Here are our emails. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you.